Welcome back to another Division 2 upload. I'm Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and now that Title Update 10.1 has gone live, I wanted to squad up with my Division UK clanmates, Steli, Padrone, and Corrupt, and blast through this week's legendary mission, DUA, to test out the changes to loot that were implemented as part of this update. But before we begin today's video, the channel is about to cross the 53,000 sub mark, all thanks to you. And in case you are not yet a sub, take just a second to smash that sub button for intensive Division content, and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another upload notification from my YouTube channel. Alright, let's begin. As advertised, there are quite a few changes to loot drops and loot scaling included with Title Update 10.1. And before I get into how I feel loot drops are looking so far with the new changes, let me first cover how they were advertised. So here are the patch notes for Title Update 10.1 and they read as follows. For loot, increased minimum item power and chances for higher power items for several difficulties, resulting in higher average rolls overall. Slight increase on challenge, bigger increase on heroic and legendary. Now, as I have often mentioned in my previous Division videos, I have always felt that players that choose to take on the hardest content in the game deserve a chance to get the best loot in the game. Now, notice I am not saying that they outright should get it no matter what, but at least they should have a chance to get it. It only makes sense, right? incentivize players to attempt a harder difficulty than they are normally comfortable with. Dangle that carrot out in front of them to make that leap from challenge to heroic or heroic to legendary, and then let's see what happens. For most of the game's life, this incentive has not existed, as difficulty settings meant literally nothing in terms of loot drops, as a player could get exotics and god-rolled items to drop with as much frequency on hard and challenge as another player could on heroic and legendary. Anyways, with Title Update 10.1, it looks like, at least with my few hours playing the game since Tuesday, that this update has helped out that loot versus difficulty divide. Now, I'm not saying that it is perfect, and I will discuss that in a bit, but it has taken a step in the right direction. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, we decided to test out these changes on Legendary District Union Arena. As according to the patch notes text, the biggest increase to minimum power and chances for higher power items would occur on Heroic and Legendary. So first off, let me cover the topic of power levels, as this is the easiest portion of the loot chances to discuss, and I can say that without a doubt, yes, the power levels for loot drops have been scaled up on Legendary difficulty. Now through our legendary run, I frequently saw items with one or two max or near max attributes and even more gear and weaponry that had what looked like 75% or higher attribute rolls. Now this is a huge change to what I am used to with legendary, and honestly one of the reasons I started to scale back my legendary attempts as the time versus loot ratio on this difficulty was terrible. Neither me or anyone in my squad saw a single purple item hit the ground or appear in a gear or weapon cache, and I am really pleased to be able to say that. Next up is targeted loot, which I have been having issues with for months, but in today's run through, it seemed to be operating smoothly. Overlord was the targeted loot for DUA on our attempt, and I frequently saw the double loot drops occurring during the playtime. Although I personally saw none, Steli received three or four sets of Fox's Prayer knee pads, and overall, we all saw quite a bit of loot hitting the floor. For months, I have played missions either solo or with one other group member, and have run entire missions on heroic difficulty and literally seen zero to just a few targeted loot drops. It has felt like the mechanic was either completely disabled or was not functioning for solo players or smaller squads. Now, I have not run through much else besides the raid and today's legendary mission, so I cannot speak about the generosity of targeted loot solo or in smaller squads for heroics, but at least for us, it seemed to be working as intended and was doing so with regularity. The final topic I need to cover has to do with rainbow loot, and I want to include in this discussion off-brand loot, which I'll explain later. So rainbow loot is still very much a thing. And I can honestly say that I saw a handful of pieces that any other day and in any other game other than The Division would have been incredible to loot. But for this game, rainbow loot, even with god rolls, is entirely useless. And this has nothing to do with us, the player base, or even entirely to do with the loot drop mechanics, but more so with how the game pushes build diversity. You see, the game defines what roles need to be filled in a squad by the color of the player's attributes. And when you have all three, 
offensive, defensive, and utility on a single piece of gear, it is seen as mediocre across the board. Players that are going for full DPS shoot for all red attributes across the board with weapon damage, crit chance, and crit damage. Anything less and your build is subpar. Tanks must be using all blues for armor, health, and armor regen or else their tank build is not as good as it could be. Healers and skill build agents must have all yellow attributes and so on and so forth. It is this push to take each defined build to its absolute maximum that has essentially turned the game into three colors, and you either have a build that uses a single color across the board, or you have an inferior build. So here enters the rainbow gear piece with maximum rolls and all three attribute slots along with the desirable talent, but it is immediately deemed as garbage to be broken down as mats, not because the player doesn't want to use it, but because of the way the build diversity determines what is needed for the chosen role, DPS, tank, or healer. You literally have to go all in, full commitment to a chosen path, or you risk not being effective. Not enough reds on your build, and you don't melt through an enemy's armor or health fast enough. Run a few blues on your DPS build because you want a little extra sustain and it makes no difference. You will be folded just as quickly as before because the game doesn't seem to toughen up your agent's ability to withstand incoming damage unless you go full commitment into armor and protections. Go full blues and it is true that you can withstand tons of incoming damage but now you can't down NPCs nearly as quickly as a full red build and the same applies to healers and skill builds that attempt to add more firepower or sustain to their builds. You see, ideally you would think that having all three of each on your gear pieces would make you strong at all three, damage, sustain, and heals or skill damage, but the game works in quite the opposite manner. And this brings us back to those rainbow gear pieces that despite having near max or maximum attribute rolls will not fit into any build scheme until the game mechanics are adjusted to value all three attributes. Now, unless a player and their build is fully invested into one of these three colors, they really don't seem to hit hard enough, tank enough damage, or heal quickly enough to be effective. So in the end, these rainbow gear pieces are deemed useless, not because of the loot drop mechanics, but because of the way players are only able to achieve maximum results by fully investing into one of the three colors. Until the game changes, players can and will not attempt to use these rainbow pieces as they will do no more than produce a build that is average across the board. Now I know I carried on a bit in that section, but it needed to be said. So before I end this one, I wanted to backtrack just a bit and touch on what I mentioned earlier, which is off-brand loot. Now this is something that I have seen quite a bit of in the past, and honestly in today's Legendary, I saw quite a bit of it again. These are gear pieces or weaponry that don't fit into any build scheme for the game, like long range weaponry with close and personal as the talent, or skill build gear pieces dropping with all red or all blue attribute rolls. And in terms of this mechanic, title update 10.1 and the health of the loot drops in the game, these type of oddball loot drops happen a lot. I frequently saw items that I could or possibly would include in my builds to test out, but the combination of the brand set, the attributes, and the talent were simply unusable. While I admit that running around with skill tier gear pieces with crit chance and crit damage along with some random talent could be interesting to try out, they would not fit into the three color system that the game's build diversity mechanics has pushed upon us. Now in terms of these off-brand drops versus rainbow drops, I'd say that when I did find a piece that I could not use, it was 70%, 30% skewed towards off-brand. I know this game mechanic was not addressed in TU 10.1, but I would like to see it adjusted for the future and the health of the loot drops in general. This is going to wrap up today's topic of title update 10.1 and the loot drop quality. And I look forward to reading your feedback in the comment section below. If you like this style of intensive division content in your lives, please make sure to smash that sub button and ring the bell to never miss a future upload notification from my YouTube channel. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up if not with a thumbs down. Links to support my full-time content creation include Patreon and Teespring, both in the video description. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming related. And until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.